Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Under Rail Expedition. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that you're supposed to join me today in the arena and the hardcore city bar. But uh, is that Is that the name? That's not the name. It is. It is the hardcore city bar. I thought it was the hardcore bar for some reason. But no, it's a hardcore city bar. Let's have, have a chat with um, Jack Quicksilver over here. I told you we'd meet again, Carrie. You look well enough. Listen, I'd love to chat, but I'm waiting for someone important. I'll catch you later. That's really interesting. The man wearing concealing robes comes up to you. That's... it doesn't... I, it's the opposite. His garment seems spotless and well-kept, and exudes a pleasant smell. He then places his hand on his chest, making his long, clean nails visible, and after taking a small bow, uh, bow, uh, starts speaking with a Pacific... Peaceful. Uh, Pacific is probably synonym to peaceful, because that's where the word comes from, but it's weird. Uh, balmy voice. Chort is evolution. Traveler. I can see you are busy, so I won't take too much of your time. My brothers and sisters and I are members of the Institute of Trot, an institution which studies and celebrates a magnificent being called Chort, as you may have already guessed. His voice reveals more and more excitement as he speaks further. Why is it magnificent, you wonder? Well, it is a primordial creature that has the ability to regenerate itself and adapt to new environments with each regenerative cycle and can technically tailor itself to survive in any environment potentially living forever. I know it sounds impossible to you, but it is true. At this mo very moment, we are trying to utilize that remarkable ability, direct the human evolution to a point where we too can walk the surface and leave this constricting underground world world to quote our founder Idine we can and we must I won't take even more second even one more second of your time if you find what I told you fascinating, which I hope you do, sister, you can seek Minister Percival on the upper level of Core City, just next to the JKK headquarters, and listen to his lecture on Chortism. Hiccup, I'm sorry. It explains our ide ideology in greater, in greater detail. Thank you, and Chort guide you. Um... Thank you for the information. I'll talk to this Minister Percival when I'm able to. Okay. Gorge. You come up to a short, stocky man looking at the table in front of him. The table is littered with numerous glasses, out of which only one is full. As he picks it up, your eyes become drawn to a sizable coal black tattoo on his right arm. You stare at the ink. It depicts an intricate earth fissure which starts from the elbow and moves down to his hand, with tiny angular cracks radiating from it in all directions. Upon looking more carefully, however, you realize that the center of the tattoo is actually a large scar, effectively making the tattoo its embellishment. Your curious stare provokes an indifferent one from him, as well as a couple of words expressed in a mi mildly annoyed manner. You need something, sugar. Who are you? Who are you? My name is Kerry, and I, w I have some questions. Questions? A man gets tired of those after a while, especially if you're being asked by random strangers. Well, I told you my name, so I'm not a complete stranger. <laughs> no, you said a name. I don't know if it's really yours, sugar. You could be anyone for all I know. It's, it's not like it matters. <laughs> Who do you think? What do you think happens if you know my real name? Still, I can I just ask you a few questions? He inspects you for a few seconds too long. I'll bite. Ask your questions. Now, whether you'll get an answer, that's a whole different matter. He returns to his drink. So, who are you anyway? Why do you ask? You seem somewhat familiar. He answers without looking at you. From where? You, you ask a lot of questions. Do you know that? 
and it's that's rich coming from me who is asking all the questions well sugar so do you now what did you say about me being familiar uh, I don't remember what why you are familiar uh, what can you tell me about your tattooed scar he takes a look at his scar, staring at it for a few moments, taking a sip of his drink in the process. The scar is from an accident. The tattoo is from a tattoo shop. Can you tell me a bit more about it? Nope. He takes a sip of his drink. Why not? Why should I? Because I asked nicely. Well, tough luck. Any more questions? Uh, sure, I gotta go. Okay. Gene. You walk toward the buff barkeeper, but somewhere along the way a mug flies before your eyes from left to right and collides with some poor squeezer's head. The blow sends the fellow to the floor face first, while everybody around him laughs at his misfortune, including the barkeeper. You finally approach him, the barkeeper, I assume, and he yells at you, as that seems to be the only way he uh, to be heard in this place. Welcome to Hardcore City Bar, he says, yells. The place where the most hardcore meet to have a drink. I haven't seen your pretty face before. I'm Jean, the owner, and this here is my beautiful wife, Harriet. Name your poison, love. Uh, sure. Let me look at your poisons. No, no, not, not, not much. Oh, no grenades. No grenades for me. Um, hey, love, can I help you with something? Yeah, I need to talk to Gorski. He leans forward and speaks in a whisper. Absolutely. Take this key here and use the back entrance. It's just around the corner. Use uh, out and around the corner to the north. Uh, he winks and then laughs and continues talking loudly. That's a good joke. Very funny. So what do you know about the Black Sea? I know as much as everyone else. Pirates, serpents, mysterious stuff. Oh. I figure if you really want to learn more about it, go talk to the ferryman. Yeah, I know, I know. They like coloring their stories with all kinds of hardcore superstitions, but there's a lot of truth to what they say. That's my advice to you, love. Have you heard of Ages Incorporated? Absolutely, love. Ever since they showed up at the docks, everyone's been asking about them. They are one of the largest private security companies from North Underrail and have been around for quite a few years. Actually, I was once considering hiring them to protect my wife while we were on a trip to North Underrail. I reckon when them northern wimps see one of our beautiful southern girls. Oh, stop you, says Harriet. He smiles. Anyway, the ages guy guys mean hardcore business, and they have a dominating record, so... I don't mean you should actually stop... No. Harriet says, I didn't mean you should actually stop, Jean. I just said it. Oh, yeah. I'm not actually sure what she's going on about. Why do the, the Northerners need a security company when they hate under rail or when they have under rail pro protectorate? Well, they need someone to protect them when they come here. You know how dangerous this place is, and not just because of local gangs and such, but free drones too, which are apparently not local, or a gang, or both. They like taking hostages and exchanging them for their own captured comrades. Protectorate can't babysit everyone, so the wealthy merchants and fat rats hire these security companies to escort them. Even though there's a lot more Protectorate in the South, these folks still need... Wait, 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 was, was that the reason... What the... Wait, wait, well, what the... Why? What? Wait, the... Is it the re... The, mm, the Protectorate forces can't protect... Can't do the whole business of protecting. So the Protectorate hires external help. Does that sound like a logical thing to you? Because it doesn't sound like a logical thing to me. I might have misread that. Um, but it doesn't sound like... Like, why don't, don't you just hire more people and expand your forces? You're paying money anyway. So why are you paying the bosses of the people you're hiring anyway? Why just not pay the people you're hiring? Because, you know, if you hire from an outside company, you're paying the bosses as well. Um, let's see, the gene, gene says, Even though there's a lot more protectorate in the South, these folks still need private security. Now, th what's currently going on is that they have been hired for some kind of an expedition to the Black Sea. So they brought pretty much everything they got, love. That's hardcore business. Mm-hmm. Uh, can I give me, can I get general directions? Absolutely, Core, C Core City is quite simple to understand, love. You're currently on the middle level of Core City. You've got your merchants here as well as the arena. You got uh, just west of, from the bar. The whole eastern area of this level is drop zone. The drop zone, I forgot the D. Anyway, uh, avoid it if possible. 
Above us is the residential area. Uh, there you will find Cortec, Praetorian Security, and JKK buildings. Three major enterprises of Core City. Above that is the entrance, or exit, however you see it, to Upper Underrail. Below us is the level, is the lower level, which has the main entrance, and below that, docks. Sewers, also, but you also absolutely don't want to go there. Um, also, also, uh, the, the lower level can be accessed through the under passages, but people rarely go there because of the lurkers, you know, about that. Um, as I said, Core City is quite easy to navigate. Love, he laughs. Yes, really not. Uh, I'd like to ask you a certain about certain people here in Core City. Absolutely, who are you talking about here? Who are we talking about here? Uh, merchants? Say the name and I'll deliver. Sergio? Listen carefully. Sergio is your man if you want to, you know, get into motion. Gene, why are you whispering? Everyone here knows about my dear love. That might be correct, but still, just go see him. He winks. Dr. Heidi Gratz? Glad you asked me, love. I often get asked how come such a derailed person can be such a good doctor. I tell this, uh, I tell them this. She is the best doctor I've ever had the pleasure of being cut open by. Heidi has had a traumatic experience in the past as she had to do an, op uh, an emergency operation on her husband. She died on the table, or he died on the table. Poor uh, woman crossed the tracks. It's a tragedy. What about Mo? Mo's a dear friend of ours. What can I say? He is one hard-working, honest, and good-looking man. Some have also mentioned he and I look alike. Isn't that funny? You'll find him near the entrance to the city on the lower level. He's got a hardcore food stall there, just by the elevator, and the food is just absolutely splendid. Try it out sometimes, love. Just do it. What about Ray Sayre? Wait, is that the... the one that sells... the... Uh, jet skis? Oh, Ray, because I think so, yeah, yeah. Uh, why, oh, Ray, what? Why he's one of the most hardcore, or my most hardcore patrons, I gotta say. I've always liked the way he, excuse me, air quotes liked, the way he puts his dirty boots on my counter. Well, that's one way to denote sarcasm. And honestly, I like it. It's not grammatically correct, because uh, it's, it doesn't, it's not correct. Um... But it's fine. I like it. <laughs> I like it because I don't like sarcasm. <laughs> and she was being sarcastic. Come on, love. Where else is he going to put them? Toolbox, bag, pocket, floor, outside. You're overreacting, love. It's not a thing as a simple cloth can't clean. Anyways, he's the only proper jet ski dealer in South Underrail. Ever since he bought the premises at the dock, his business started booming. Nowadays, you can see all kinds of dominating jets at his store. He's an honest man who would never ever rip anyone off. If he ain't got what you need, no one got it. The prices are fair and the service is hardcore. Uh, well, wait to advertise your friend. He does it whenever he gets the chance, says Harriet. Love! Sure. Um, can I ask you about someone else? Uh, Norton residents. Nope. Regular folks, if the regular is the right word. Uh, say the name and I'll deliver. I'll fave it. Oh, not him. Just not him. He's absolutely derailed. I mean, he, he, co he comes here from time to time and puts some stinking animal hearts on the table. I tell him to get lost. He tells me, you're not going to believe this. He tells me, what the hell? He says, says, I'm, I'm, I'm him now. You get it? Anyway, uh, he says, what the hell? Barkeepers are, I don't know why he doesn't say barkeep, but he says barkeepers. Uh, barkeepers are merchants. They should be able to buy what I offer them. Like, yeah, so how much will you give me for these hearts? That's, that's what he says. Calm down, Gene. He hasn't shown up ever since you punched him in the nose. Ah, he comes back sometimes, sits outside, gives me collie wobbles when I see him. Ugh. Uh, what about John the Beautiful? He's a nice kid, a bit odd with his foot for information policy, but it's been working out for him, which is hardcore. You can find him behind the bar most of the time. That's where he hangs out uh, when he's not at most stall. And he's also very cute, says Harriet. What? So when I tell a girl she's got a nice pat cootie... No, patcuti? That patuti, you hit me on the head with a pen. But when you say someone's cute, it's okay. Uh, I would say that y you said it already and you didn't. That's not. This is just patently false, I suppose. Shut up, sweetie. Sure. Um. Who's, uh. And also, yeah, it's pretty clear he's, he's the. He. Basically, he's got her under his thumb, so the, the whole. Hitting him with a pen 
it doesn't really matter because he needs to hire people to go to North Underrail to protect her specifically. So, um, who's the black guy with a Fisher tattoo? Uh, tattoo, the guy over there. That's Gorge. At least that's how I heard someone call him. He's not a talkative fellow, love. He's an Underrail Express train operator and one of the more frequent patrons. Just comes here, orders drinks, and dominates a few bottles all by himself, and then leaves. He also seems prone to fistfights. I thought she was going to say he's cute, but she didn't. Uh, uh, really now, love? That only happened once. And he was provoked. Some pipe worker, his owner, completely unimportant, was bugging him about something. Gorge got up and hit him, in, uh, hit him right in the middle of his face, sending teeth all across the bar. One gal immediately yelled, and, and now I'm the gal, Hey, I wanted ice in my drink, not teeth! To which we all laughed. But I can't, I can't tell jokes, so it doesn't, it doesn't sound this funny right now. Harriet says, While the zoner was choking on one of his own, I suppose teeth, well, I never wanted him to choke on it on, in my bar, so I threw him out. You mess with my patrons, you better drop off. Right, love? Well, apparently he wasn't one of your patrons, because clearly Gorge was the one who messed with him, because <laughs> of the teeth. Um, do you know anything about his tattooed scar? I've heard rumors, love. Some say his father did it to him when he was young as a punishment. Others say he got it in a fight when he was protecting his brother from bandits. His brother got killed and Gorge passed out from blood loss after killing every pipe worker there. He would have died if someone hadn't found him. That's what I've heard, but how true it is, I don't know. Well, it certainly is not true because you said two uh, competing uh, possibilities. So, it's definitely not true. Which Whichever one is, it's not true. Unless... Unless it was his father that attacked his brother, in which case they could be both true. That would be interesting. I, I don't know that it is. Uh, what about Mac, the graffiti artist? Absolutely, love. You've probably seen a lot of graffiti around the city. Most of those were done by Mac himself. I can't tell you a lot about him. He comes here occasionally, but he keeps to himself most of the time. He brings in a lot of girls to the bar. Very attractive girls, says Harriet. I don't know how and where he picks them up. He doesn't seem concerned about the... Say the thing that he was concerned about before, which is calling other people attractive, and he's is good at it. He's so damn hardcore. Why is he hardcore? He can't be loyal to a single woman, so he changes them like socks. Nothing, nothing hardcore about it. Uh, yeah, love, you're absolutely right. A man should be loyal to a single woman and not even think about other women ever again. Just, uh, sure, these people have have issues. Uh, I'd like to ask you something else. Nope, I changed my mind. Uh, I'd like to... How do you feel about the Faceless Invasion? Well, if they do break into the city, I'll give them free drinks. What Gene wanted to say, he is, uh, he'd start quaking before the Faceless and try to bribe them with booze. Why, love? Why? Sweetie, I'm joking. Hardcore men know how to take a joke and cook, clean, tell their wives they love them from time to time and have the... She clears her throat. Have the... I don't know where that was going. Uh, what can you tell me about your wife? Absolutely. Is that... Am I asking the wrong... Am I saying the wrong thing? Am I saying... Am I clicking on an option and I'm not reading it properly? Because that is not an answer to what you can you tell me about to your wife. He says, She's gorgeous, wonderful, smart, funny. This bar would feel so empty and lifeless without her. And end. That's enough, Gene. I can see you've practiced. And you haven't complimented a girl's patootie today. I, I love you. She smiles. Dominating. Nice. I'm looking for the Hasid Hunters. Mm, I know them. They're led by this guy, uh... Cornell? Yeah, Cornell. Uh, the green Mohawk guy. Thanks, love. A bunch of scavengers. They come here from time to time. Can't tell you much else about them, really. Haven't seen them in a while. Who knows? Maybe they're dead. Ha ha ha. Okay. Well, uh, that's very nice of you. Harriet. I'm sorry, sweetie. I am secondary character and don't talk to you. It's fair enough. Uh, so we... Where did we come from? There. We came from there. This is a place. And we have somebody called Rash. Hi. Why'd you name me Rash? I rarely have rashes. The monsters came out of the wall, Mom. I'm scared. My na my life turned to pipeworks after you both died. Nasty pipeworks. What's going on here? I will see you later, maybe, or never. Uh, and then we have the stairs up. Now, he says specifically to go outside, so I think it's over there. And there's a general store over here. 
hiccup. So I'm gonna save it and we're gonna continue exploring before we go talk to Gorski. Because I do want to go back to Tanner and see where that particular quest goes to. If it indeed go it goes anywhere, because it might not. Oscar! Oh! That's not necessarily wanted to do, wanted, what I wanted to do. You see a boulder of a man encased in metal armor as he is inspecting an assault rifle. His eye is peering into the gun's chamber through the open ejection port, but an instant after you come into the store, it shifts to you. He lowers the rifle, closing the bolt simultaneously before setting it aside and greeting you with a mean face and a corresponding voice. That was a very quick gun pointed at me to immediately not be pointed at me again. Greetings, gunslinger! Need guns to exterminate your enemies? Need explosives to demolish anything that stands in your way? Need bullets to fuel your murderous urges? Or perhaps you need armor to protect your weak flesh from harm? If you... if your answer is yes to any of these questions... Then you've got to the right place. Welcome to Oscar's Armory. Yes, let me see what you have. I got knives. And... oh. Oh, right, these are unique. Probably want to keep those. What do you have? That I want. I mean, it's a very important detail there. Hmm, galvanic vests. I probably want to look at uh, crafting components. Yeah. It's not bad quality. It's 99. It's pretty good. But, um, not what we're looking for. So, we got a bunch of armor. Some pretty expensive armor as well if I needed it, which I don't. And that's that. Yep. Thanks for the for the things. Hey, Gunslinger, back for more gear? Uh, I'd like to ask you some questions about the city. Shoot! Get it? <laughs> uh, the drop zone. That place is too hardcore for someone like you. Muggers and murderers at every corner. Plagues, diseases, hardcore gangs. Even the terrain is against you. One wrong step and off you go to kiss the ground below. I mean, look. Underclassed folk were forced to live there. They sort of built their own homes at the edges of the core city. That's hardcore, sister. Uh, what about the arena? Uh, did he say something on the second line? You gotta be hardcore to live there, that's for sure. Yeah, what about the arena? Uh, that's what I'm saying, sister. That's where all the fun happens in Core City. What well, other than Hardcore City Bar, of course, which is hardcore, and uh, Gauntlet, which is also hardcore. I go there all the time to watch bloodshed and hardcore domination. People come from every freaking freaking where to see gladiators turn each other into pulp. It's so much fun I'd shed a tear right now, but I'm a bit too hardcore for that. Right. Um. What about the Gauntlet? Listen to this brilliant idea. You get a runner, some hardcore runner, and you, it could be a guy or a girl, and you let him go through these cha Apparently the arena is only for men. We have heard of it being just for men before. Uh, and you let him go through these challenging rooms, but here's what's so hardcore about it. There are two other runners, and whoever finishes first pulls the lever and fries the other two. Ha ha ha. So brutal. And the rooms are filled with traps and deadly creatures, hardcore stuff, and they get more difficult. And you don't know what's gonna get come next. Yeah, that, that is really difficult. Some rooms are very difficult to get through. JKK broadcasts it every week. They have a, de a dedicated channel for that. Uh, what about the oligarchy? I'm just gonna say this. Knight, Edstrom, and Simon. Uh, Simmons, maybe. Uh, made the arena and the gauntlet possible. That's hardcore, and that's all that matters in Core City. The end. There we go. Uh, what about Cortec? Listen, sister, Cortec built the whole system that makes the gauntlet do its thing. So, some hardcore elevator machinery. They're the future. And the weapons they make, man, they got the stuff to blow up everything from Camp Aethor to Fort Apogee and Foundry. So brutal, yet so hardcore. Which you'd think were, would go any in, hand in hand. And he specifically says yet instead of end, which is weird. Uh, so that was about Cortec. What about JKK? Uh, if it wasn't for them, people all over the Underrail wouldn't be able to watch the arena broadcasts, which would be... Eh, stupid, let's face it. Arena now brings arena to the people unfortunate enough to not be able to watch it live. You grab some burgers or barrel soup if you're from the drop zone, uh, drop zone and watch people murder each other's faces off. Dominating. Yeah, the game really doesn't make... <laughs> It's not like, uh, uh, recently I was playing, um, I am still playing Oblivion, and in Oblivion there's an arena. No mention whatsoever about how brutal and e immoral that is uh, in the game. In this game, it's pretty obvious. They, they, they really go all out on the whole, everybody dies. 
uh, situation, uh, which I find a lot more interesting, even though it is still, you know, what the sort of unnuanced, but it's fine. You don't need nuance in everything. Um, Praetorian security? They're the largest armed force in Core City, Archibald Knight Chief. Used to be a chief security officer at the Biocorp before they fell apart some years ago. After all the ruckus with the Protectorate, he gathered some bad boys and enforced order in this place. And I used to be one of them. No one says hardcore. Protectorate's got nothing on them. Nothing. The end, he says. Okay, well, I'll remember that when I have to inevitably fight them both, maybe. <laughs> I don't know where we're going with that. But I do know that we're out of time for the day. So for right now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Underrail Expedition. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and leave a comment. Like the video if you want to see the next episode come out sooner rather than later. But above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.